It's not often that I get a car that actually makes me feel something. It's been about a decade, but this one certainly does. Jeep Gladiator. If you think this is just a Wrangler with a tray back, you're wrong. It's wider. It's longer. It's about 800 millimetres longer. The wheelbase is almost 500 millimetres longer. You can get two models, the Overland and the Rubicon. Overland is 74,490 and this one is 76,490. With on roads, that's going to put you at over $80,000. So let's call it 80 grand. What do you get for 80 grand? These wheels are 17 inch with 32 inch tires. You get rescue hooks front and back. And up on the bonnet, these nifty mounts serve as tie downs for stuff you've got attached to the roof, but also a place for the windscreen to rest when it's folded down. Because you see, all of this stuff comes off. The roof comes off. The rear window comes off and the front window falls down. This is the only convertible truck in its class. Not only that, the doors, bonnet and tailgate are all aluminium and you get on the Rubicon this locking folding top. This kind of rolls up and folds towards the front of the cabin and it won't open if the tailgate's closed. The tailgate locks with the car but opening it then allows this to be folded back. You can then unlock it with these tabs and just roll it back across the top of the tray. Inside it's got a fancy cargo management system that comes with the Rubicon. And these retro LED tail lights stick out from the side of the bodywork, but they're protected for off-road mode. There's some more rescue hooks and a really sturdy bumper. Inside the rear is not quite as capacious as you'd think. There's still quite a bit of knee room and this fancy kind of webbed backing for the front seat. You get a map holder, some cup holders, and rear vent outlets. Because the doors can be taken off, the window controls are here on the center console. You get quite a good view from here in the back seat because you're sitting over the people in the front seat. And the other thing is, because this roof can be taken off leaving just the rollover frame, the speakers and central light are in a little T-bar thing in the middle. So this whole section stays on when you take the roof off. So the roof doesn't actually meet the door here. You can put your hand right up inside and wave hello at the top. The rear section is one large panel and the front comes out in two panels. I can't imagine why you'd only want to take one panel out, but there you go. In the front, I particularly like how this interior is laid out. The window switches for the front are here on the center console, just like they are in the back. Funnily enough, the window is auto down, but not auto up. The gear lever has this big red knob, which I love, and the lever over to the side for two high, four high auto, four high part time, neutral and four low, gives you proper full control of your off-roading. Now remember, there's two different off-road systems, one for the Rubicon, one for the Overland. One thing I want to show you is the reversing camera, something I think this car would be almost impossible to drive without. You can see that there's this lovely, big, wide, clear image. But it's got a trick. You can see here that there's another button, which a camera pointing forward. This is for out on the trail. You can put the camera forward and you can see what's happening in front of you, including predictive lines, which I think is kind of cool. Down here, and I think this is so neat, there's a camera clean button. So like your headlights and windscreen, you can give it a clean if you're out in the trail and you've got a little bit dirty. And who doesn't like getting a little bit dirty? Okay, let's get out of that. The other thing is that we've got digital audio radio in this latest Uconnect system and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So you're well versed in all that modern electronic now. You can buy a Jeep and feel like you're not missing out on anything. And I think that's the important thing because in days gone by, some of those old Jeeps were a bit how's your father. What's not how's your father is the point that this Pentastar six cylinder, it is magnificently silky. 
It's connected to the wheels by an eight-speed auto with ZF automatic. And it's just a lovely thing to drive. The acceleration is smooth and linear, though there are times when it screams its head off, but actually this sounds really nice when it's screaming its head off. Fuel consumption is a little bit ordinary. Most of our week has been spent in and around town. At the moment, it's doing about 13 litres per 100 kilometres. I parked it next to a Toyota Hilux in the local shopping centre. Here's some photos. The Jeep overhung the Hilux by probably 150 millimetres or more. I can't tell you how great it feels to be sitting so high in such a beast of a thing. The only thing that would make it better is a big rumbling V8 stirring from under the bonnet. As it turns out, this little silky, smooth, beautiful Pentastar six-cylinder engine is absolutely tickety-boo. On the highway, at 110, these tyres really scream. Now, you may have noticed that they're the knobbly off-roading tyres. They're notoriously noisy at the best of times. But do you know what? I don't care. And this cabin is much quieter than other Jeeps that I've driven. Uh, certainly with the exception of the luxury models. The Wranglers are notoriously noisy, but they've got little bits of sound deadening up here in the roof and under the floor. It's really quite nice. I don't think I'd like to drive it like this guy with the roof and sides off. No, thank you very much. The approach and departure angles really allow you to get out off-road and the fact that you've got so much ground clearance means that you can pick over rocks and so forth. Its off-road capabilities have never been in question. What's always been the problem for me is the way they drive on the road. And again, these off-road tyres make the steering a little bit woolly. The sidewalls are so tall that there's such a lot of give in it that you know, you flex, but if you took lower profile tyres off-road, hello Jeep, if you took lower profile tyres off-road, then honestly you're going to come to grief the second you meet the first sharp rock. And that brings me to ride. There are special dampers for this car, and it makes the ride, certainly at 80, which is what we're doing now, really, really good. Now you can hear quite a bit of hum from those tyres at 80, but that notwithstanding, ride is excellent. The last few days we've spent travelling around New South Wales. We went to the beach yesterday at Thoreau and had a lovely lunch at the Seaside Pavilion. We parked the Jeep under a majestic row of Norfolk Pines. I felt that I was in the perfect vehicle. You might be worried about the safety rating that Jeep Wrangler's got. They've upgraded now, there's a lot of active safety. You get front airbags, autonomous emergency braking, and that's all contained in this unit here, so even when the windscreen is folded forward, the AEB unit stays up here where it should be. And the other thing is, with that reversing camera, parking was no problem either. I could go to the local shopping centre and get it pinpoint accurate. Not once have I ever had to do more than a single steering wheel turn to get into a parking spot. There you go. I can see a market for this, even with people that don't want to go off-road. They just want a penis extension. And who doesn't? Please come out. I'm letting a Ford Ranger out. There's twin zone climate control and heated steering wheel. All of those buttons are up here, neatly displayed in one area. You can notice now that we've stopped that my engine has stopped. And that's saving CO2 and more importantly, petrol. There's a button here that I can press to turn that system off and the engine's just fired back into life. There's the parking system. And there's also, in the infotainment system, it is taking a while to get there. But there are off-road <laughs> off pages. And it's just told me, never get stuck. So I can bring up various gauges for pitch and roll and I can also bring up my trail cam, which is the cameras that I told you about before. And that will help me not only in tight car parks, but it will help me on those trails so I can see exactly where I am at all times. 
Along the bottom of this are the settings for navigation, phone, the apps, and there's also controls for mirror dimming, the backup camera, forward camera, the heated seats, and the steering wheel heating. You can go th directly through the button, or you can go through this screen on the infotainment system. Below that are the window controls, and below that are the off-roading controls. Now, right down the bottom, you've got four auxiliary buttons, and you can program that for accessories that you might attach, like a light bar, for example. I decided long ago that there was something about this Jeep that made it more than the sum of its parts. And it wasn't just the glossy anodized aluminium looking dash or the retro vents. It wasn't the fancy, slightly ye olde whirly off-roading controls. It was the fact that it made me feel like the king of the road. I, I know I've said that about other cars. Toyota's Land Cruiser for one, and it's certainly more comfortable. But although it was nicer to drive, it just did not make me feel like this Jeep does. I feel great. I love this car and I don't want to give it back. I really, really don't want to give it back. That's all this week from us, from Jeep and from the Gladiator. Jeep say they've sorted their reliability, but only time will tell. I like this car a lot. And if you've liked it and you've liked the film, don't forget, leave a comment, hit like, and just there to subscribe.